White-haired elite teachers with cool eyes, energetic students with demons within them, edgy black-haired kids from a cool clan, and smart females that ground the story. They're pretty similar, so yeah, people make them fight to the death. Awesome. Let's just get to business right away. The actual raw destructive powers of these characters probably doesn't matter that much if they were to fight. So, for a brief answer, most people would consider things such as the Bijou from Naruto, which can create mountain nuking explosions that can possibly show the curvature of the Earth, and fighting the Akatsuki that can take down these Bijou plus their Shinobi, as stated in the data books, also known as Jinshuriki, and shown on screen as more impressive than Jujutsu Kaisen's higher feats, such as Dogon's domain expansion, where he creates something like a small smaller tropical island in terms of the raw amount of energy output both verses have. It gets even worse when you incorporate Kakashi's dual Mangekyo Sharingan amps at the end of the series, where he pretty blatantly is as strong or potentially even stronger than Naruto and Sasuke in their six path states who are struggling against Kaguya, who when amped slightly can nuke dimensions with planets, moons, and possibly stars in them, which JJK really doesn't have much that compares to that, unless you think this action highlight in Dogon's domain in the manga is a star, then maybe it becomes more fair. Or unless you think Gojo is stronger than Okari, even when he jackpots and gets infinite cursed energy, and ignore that infinite can just mean very great and say Gojo can annihilate the whole universe or something. Anyway, most people tend to agree at least that Duel Mangekyo Sharingan Kakashi with his six pads amps in terms of raw power is stronger than what Gojo has at least shown thus far. So why am I saying it doesn't actually matter? Well, it doesn't actually matter due to the fact that Kakashi just straight up will never hit Gojo Satoru with any normal attack whatsoever. Yes, I am saying that Gojo's technique, the Limitless, would actually negate any of Kakashi's normal techniques or attacks, such as Raikiri, Fireball Jutsu, and so on. But why would I, someone who is heavily against saying things that haven't been shown to work on much stronger people, say that this would work on Kakashi, who is potentially much stronger? It seems somewhat hypocritical considering my track record. Well, that's because of the way Gojo's ability actually functions. And to be fair, when I first wrote this video, I actually theorized that Gojo's infinity barrier technique, which basically stops anything from touching him, was just some barrier technique that due to him having cursed energy stronger than anybody else in his series, would negate their attacks because they're weaker than him, but as I studied more into this, this is what I actually found. In 2021, in Jump's Giga Summer, there was a special for JJK known as the Deep Learning Mathematics Lecture, in which the JJK editor, Mr. Takano, was brought on by Jump to discuss with Mr. Hino, a professor at the Institute of Statistical Mathematics, and Mr. Sonoda, a research fellow at Institute of Physical and Chemical Research. They basically got some heavy hitters, or as they call them, special grade mathematicians literally, and I'm not even joking, to give an actual theory deep dive on how they think the math behind Gojo's abilities worked. And it got so complicated that they just straight up said, yeah, uh, if you actually care, ask your math teacher for help or something. It was really awkward, actually. Considering this is worked on with the JJK editor who works on the story closely and is published by Jump, it's pretty credible, so let's go into what they think of Gojo's abilities and why it's relevant for Kakashi vs. Gojo. The lecture they give, like I said, and even they themselves say, is pretty complicated, and I'll sum it up for you guys in a few basic steps and theories that they give. One of the first theories given for his ability is that the Limitless, which draws a universal concept known as infinity into the forefront of a battle, actively creates and uses said infinity within any space Gojo desires between he and his opponent, which would explain his famous hand sign where he's showing like almost a pinch motion to Jogo, you're touching the infinity between us as he can create an infinity between any distance. To get into it, for instance, the difference between infinity and one is infinite, but Gojo may be able to exaggerate every frame between something like one to zero to create an infinity as well. An example being, take one in zero. In between one and zero, you could have 0 0.1, 0 0.001, 0 0.00001, etc, etc, and any infinite amount of 0, 0, 0, 0000s you want in between 1 and 0 that way. Or if you need an even simpler example, say you have 1 and 0 and divide it by half, so 0 0.5. Say 1 and 0 are two different spots on your floor, then after you go halfway through it, go halfway again. 
then again, then again, and then again. And you could technically keep having the remaining half distance infinitely. You can make a half of any distance you want forever. Similar to the concept of Achilles and the tortoise proposed by an ancient Greek philosopher named Zeno, which Gojo, funny enough, actually brings up himself in the manga. The theory is that if Achilles were to race a tortoise that was given a head start, that the amount of distance between him and the tortoise would always be infinite and would require an infinite amount of steps to reach the tortoise, as Achilles, whenever he reached halfway to the tortoise, would continually have to keep going to the next halfway point between he and the tortoise over and over and over again, and since there are infinite halfway points, as whenever you reach halfway to something, there's a new halfway point, he'd have to do it forever. As there could theoretically be an infinite amount of points between any distance, not only theoretically making motion impossible, but making Achilles move slower and slower the closer he got to the tortoise, as every halfway point remaining between him and the tortoise would just get smaller and smaller until Achilles just looked like he wasn't moving anymore. Of course, you could debunk Zeno's tortoise paradox by quite literally punching him in the face and then saying, oh, I thought my fist would never reach you or something. But in this universe of JJK, Gojo is implying that something like that would become more realistic using infinity and cursed energy. As we know, there are many cursed techniques that actually straight up manipulate reality with Limitless and Gojo probably not being too dissimilar. And in fact, Gojo actually says he can create impossibilities using these techniques in the manga himself, but something that is more likely is actually something that Gojo sort of also implies. The next theory would then be is something like the Ryman series theorem, which is way too much to fully explain in this video, but in short, you can explain how Gojo could manipulate space using infinity and limitless to diverge something this way or change its distance even with an infinite series that ends with a finite result. Here's an example using something called the alternating harmonic series or a conditionally conditional Convergent series, which is once again something Gojo mentions, and rearranging it to change its result despite having the virtually the same qualities from before but rearranged. Let me show you an example. So, say that you start with one, and then you subtract one half, add one third, minus one fourth, add one fifth, minus one sixth, add one seventh, and then you basically you do this forever. You basically create a series, and then the result of that would actually be a logarithmic two, and I'll show why that is on the screen now. But then, something you could then do is by changing the order, say you then go one, then minus one half, then minus one fourth, plus one third, minus one sixth, minus one eighth, plus one fifth, minus one tenth, and then so on and so on, and you kept everything that was in the original series but changed the order, it would actually be half the results of the original. So, by simply changing the order of our series, or our conditionally convergent series, or alternating harmonic series, we actually get half the result of what we got despite it having the same exact things within it, just in a different order. The theory then is that Gojo can manipulate orders of space between he and his opponent with positive and negative things like blue, red, etc., which can manipulate space, from what we know, and thus change the actual distance between he and his opponent, negating any attack that comes towards him, as they just simply diverge and never reach him regardless of strength. As has been somewhat proven using Ryman Theorem, you could get any result between two points if you can freely reorganize the series between them like Gojo is implied to be able to do. The final theory is that Gojo is sort of manipulating the concepts of near and far and giving the perception that his opponents are moving farther than they actually are. With an example being he bends the density of space to become more dense the closer you get to him to give the illusion that you have traveled farther than in actuality and so on. There's a lot more to be said about this, but I don't want to get into detail because I sort of disagree with the idea of perception manipulation being what Limitless is. Examples of this being in Gojo versus Jogo. Yeah, really interesting names. Jogo shoots a fire blast that completely surpasses the distance and all around Gojo, yet it doesn't actually touch him specifically. Unless Gojo is giving Jogo's fireballs perception, then confusing their perception, it doesn't really make a lot of sense for this to be the case. This also happens whenever Gojo is clearly within an explosion or any type of blast, then engulfs his entire body body or the entire area, so unless the Gojo we are seeing is an illusion, which doesn't seem to be the case, then it is not perception manipulation. However, that theory isn't technically impossible either. Finally, I'll just tell you all what I believe is the limitless technique, and it's probably the most simple answer. In the Jujutsu Kaisen movie for Volume Zero, we see a Jujutsu sorcerer named Miguel face Gojo, and he explains Gojo's red technique, which he probably learned from Geto, who is Gojo's basically best friend, and in the manga he states that Gojo manipulates space on an atomic 
comic level, but in the movie adaptation, which many in the JJK fandom consider still canon due to the author's comments on many, many reasons, Miguel actually says that Gojo manipulates not just space, but Gojo actually manipulates space-time itself, the fabric of our universe. Red is actually an extension of the Limitless, and then uses Infinity as an engine, as stated in the Summer Jump special earlier I already mentioned, and if you simply state that he manipulates space-time to actually manipulate the distance between he and his opponents, using theories like Zeno's Paradox and so forth, everything begins to make a lot more sense. The way he fights his opponents, warping their bodies, his ability to teleport, his ability to manipulate distance between he and others, the ability to generate infinite information, his ability to remove things from existence with things like purple, and even the ability to float in the air and seemingly remove his mass, all things make much more sense with this concept in mind. This would also explain why Gojo, while trapped in, say, the timeless prison realm, spoiler, can still affect the realm and surprise an extremely intelligent character named Kenjaku and talk while there is no time within it, as he himself can manipulate time and space. Either that, or Gojo can just move without time, and he's just beyond infinitely fast, somehow. Anyway, the time-space interpretation also makes much more sense when later characters are stated to manipulate reality in any way they want, such as Takabo's power of comedian, where he can make anything he finds funny literally a reality, and it still would only oppose Gojo, not outright defeat him. The abilities like Red, which Gojo explains as a void in space, and even Hollow Purple, which is based on a negative hollow-looking equation, in reality that removes things from existence using imaginary numbers and concepts also makes much more sense with this. Shonen Jump's objective conclusion at the end of the math segment without any theories or whatever, their final statement was this. Using the limitless curse technique red and blue, Gojo can do conversion and change the scale of distance between him and his opponent. Of course, that is a simple breakdown, but that is what it is basically at the end of the day. Many detractors will try to claim that Gojo only slows people down, which he in fact does. However, also in this special statement, that it slows them down and then stops them as well. Due to these space-time manipulations and highly likely theories of how Infinity works, Kakashi would more than likely never just be able to say, simply <laughs> punch Gojo in the face, like you could to Zeno after he told you his tortoise paradox. So does this mean Kakashi can't beat Gojo? No. This is actually where the real fight would then begin, the battle of the Mangekyo Sharingan versus the Six Eyes. If Kakashi was ever unable to touch Gojo with conventional attacks, and Gojo is even remotely powerful enough to damage or put Kakashi on guard, he would undoubtedly resort to using his ocular jutsu Kamui eventually, with Duel Mangekyo Kakashi resorting to the Kamui Shuriken and Kamui Raikiri, respectively. Some people believe that if a character can move at light speed, that they can actually bypass Gojo's Limitless, since Gojo manipulates space and time on an atomic level, and light is made of photons, which are smaller than the atoms that Gojo is stated to manipulate. The reason this wouldn't work with Kakashi is because even if Kakashi did move at light speed, theoretically, he himself is not just photons. He's just moving as fast as light, which would be made of photons. Kind of a dur argument by the community, but yes, he would still need his Mangekyo powers. The next one is people thinking you can blitz and bypass Infinity with speed beyond what it is shown to stop before. However, unfortunately, after Gojo faces Toji, his Infinity is usually pretty much always active, and due to the discussion earlier, would just always be warping space around his body to permanently diverge and anything that goes through said space to never touch him regardless of finite speed. It's not a speed or reactionary thing, it's just the literal space around him doesn't lead to him in any conventional way. One reason people think this is because when Gojo was initially mastering his limitless barrier, that it used to distinguish threats of people then act accordingly. However, many JJK fans will currently say that he has a passive barrier that is always active regardless of threat gauge, that he can alter the properties of manually afterward if he has to. He also has a limitless amount of stamina that infinitely regenerates and thus Limitless is always active. This may sound like I'm giving Gojo a lot of the benefit of the doubt, which I am, to be fair, but this does not mean Kakashi can't win, as I stated earlier, and even if it is all true and giving both sides the benefit of the doubt and still proving a conclusion makes it much more convincing than if I were to try to downplay Gojo or not give him everything he has, which I'll show you. Anyway, let's get to the actual Mangekyo powers now. Kamui, which is basically Kakashi's ability to rip open a hole in space and time into the Kamui realm, would straight 
straight up rip Gojo in half, at least the normal variation of Kamui. And assuming that Gojo we always see isn't some kind of illusion or something, and Kakashi wouldn't just be like negging an illusion made by Infinity, which I would extremely doubt since when he fought Toji and turned off his limitless curse technique and deactivated Infinity, Gojo was still where everyone thought he was, etc. Anyway, Kamui doesn't actually travel to someone, so it wouldn't actually travel through the Infinity between him and Gojo, it would actually spawn or just appear on Gojo's body and then just start ripping him in half. You could argue that Kakashi might spawn Kamui on Infinity when he's looking at Gojo, since Infinity is technically between him and Kakashi at all times. However, due to Infinity actually being everywhere at all times, you don't actually perceive or visually see this Infinity. Gojo more so manipulates what's always around everyone with a curse technique. So Kakashi would actually see just Gojo, and if he spawned a Kamui, it would spawn on Gojo's body. In which the only way he's surviving it is if he can manipulate the spatial properties of his own body to just sort of negate being spatially warped away. Which may be possible, but once again, judging off of that Toji fight, his body seems to actually take damage even after his cursed energy can reactivate, and he doesn't just reform everything in his body normally. It seems like he has to regenerate. So from there, we have to actually gauge the speed of Kamui versus Gojo to make sure he can't just teleport away from it using blue or whatever and run like Deidara did, because if you guys didn't know, Gojo can actually teleport with a hand sign. Sort of like flying Raijin, but just by clapping his hands together. If we use the War Art Kakashi's Kamui as an example, and not DMS yet, War Art Kakashi alongside Obito's Kamui, amping the Kamui's speed to two times, could react and warp things faster than Ten Tails Madara's True Seeking Orbs. These True Seeking Orbs are able to somewhat move comparatively in speed to Might Guy in the Eighth Gate and Seventh Gate, with characters like Minato, Gara, Gated Lee, and Kakashi somewhat struggling to react to them otherwise, although they could react to them. With all these characters being much, much, much faster than the likes of Haku from the Land of Waves, who could fling himself between mirrors at the speed of light, which Guy and Rock Lee also react to during the war, or much faster than Kid Kakashi who could chop a lightning bolt in half in the middle of the air, the True Seeing Orb should also be faster than Darwi's Laser Circus, which is literally just light reflecting off of water and then moving through the air, and should be faster than the Fourth Raikage and Killer Bee's Lariat, which usually is in base or with a few version 1 one-tailed cloaks, which is stated to move at the speed of light in the data books. Kakashi also uses this Kamui to rip off Deidara's arm while he's in mid-combat, despite his Kamui being in a much weaker state at the beginning of Shippuden, and is implied to be able to react to Kakuzu's Jutsu mid-combat if he had to, and can also react to pain in mid-combat, and so forth. It's implied to at least be relative in speed to him at the bare minimum. Jujutsu Kaisen, due to being a newer shonen, doesn't actually have a lot of speed feats, and it actually all clocks in at under the speed of lightning for pretty much everything, which is for the most part slower than Kakashi as a chakra drained child. This isn't to say that Gojo couldn't be faster, it's just that we don't really know, sort of like a Saitama situation, you just sort of assume he's much faster than what we've seen. Unless you think him reacting to say something like Jogo in his domain gives him instantaneous reaction speed as domains always hit their target pretty much instantly, or you think he has some kind of infinite speed for talking in a realm without time, like the prison realm later. With those, Gojo could easily clap his hands, use time-space manipulation, and then avoid Kamui. Otherwise, he just pretty much gets ripped in two, and that's about that. If Gojo can survive Kamui, he can then activate his own domain expansion called Limitless Void. Limitless Void spawns an orb around its target and is guaranteed to hit its opponent no matter what. It's kind of a point of the verse's ability. Inside this domain, Gojo kind of injects the target with multiple different infinities worth of information. That sounds insane, multiple infinities worth, but I'm not actually exaggerating. A good example is, imagine Kakashi saw an apple in his life one time. And instead of seeing this apple or hearing an apple an infinite amount of times, Kakashi would first see, hear, and perceive the letter A from apple infinitely first, then P, then the next P, and then the L, the E, and then apple for infinity over and over and over again. This happens until the target absorbs so much information that they cannot move and eventually die. A good example of also what this looks like is in 0.2 seconds, the limitless void will inject six months of information into its target. 0.2 seconds. For reference, remember that the Tsukuyomi at, in Naruto Part 1 that Itachi used on Kakashi gave him three days worth of pain and information and he was sent to the hospital. While I think Tsukuyomi is, is a little bit stronger than Limitless Void, Limitless Void isn't an illusion and isn't something the Sharingan can simply reflect or ignore. It's actual physical information that is being injected from the universe itself. Also, Itachi did only give Kakashi three days of information and was actually trying to spare him and go easy on him. And as we know, 
Itachi can make you live out your entire life instantly and make you die in an instant. In this case, Gojo is pretty much somewhat similar and can actually give you actual infinities and information you can't just reflect or avoid. Due to this, Gojo would more than likely be able to actually kill Kakashi, at least pre-DMS, with his domain expansion, or pre-Mangekyo Kakashi. Especially if Kakashi can't hurt Gojo with conventional attacks, and can't land calmly for whatever reason. It's pretty much guaranteed that part one Kakashi is getting bodied by Gojo. But, as I implied, that is unless you think with DMS or even Mangekyo Sharingan, Kakashi has the mind space and ocular prowess to handle infinite amounts of information. A good example is how Itachi can actually generate that kind of information and tolerate himself using his Mangekyo Sharingan, and with DMS Kakashi easily surpassing Itachi's ocular prowess, and can even potentially surpass or rival the top tier of the entire Naruto Shippuden verse, like Six Paths Naruto, Renegon Sasuke, Ten Tails of Madara, and etc. He can also spam Kamui and is intangible at will, although his Kamui is more projectile based with Shuriken, so it's more debatable if it would actually go through infinity just straight up. It's possible he could cut through the manipulated space of Gojo's infinity, however. One last final thing to go over for Kakashi's sake, this mainly would only apply to part 1 Kakashi, as I mainly discussed the main win con for Kakashi during the war arc and DMS, which is the premise of this video, is his Mangekyo abilities, his space-time manipulation, and his resistances. But for part 1 Kakashi, an interesting win con since he doesn't have Mangekyo abilities, or he does but he can't necessarily use them since he could barely use his normal Sharingan, is of course his Genjutsu and his ocular Genjutsu abilities. The reason I didn't really talk about this too much, once again, due to the win cons, and also because Genjutsu working on other universes could be its own video topic entirely. Genjutsu either works only on people that are born with a chakra network within them, which is sort of a Naruto exclusive thing. It's almost like a circulatory system, but for chakra within your body that you're born with that interlinks with all your organs. So even like energy equation wouldn't necessarily give you a chakra network. It's sort of like a biological just difference. But if you were to equate chakra and say cursed energy, and say that Kakashi could use Genjutsu and Ocular Genjutsu on someone like Gojo, then you'd be able to say, okay, he could cast illusions on Gojo, and considering that Gojo is sort of a loudmouth and might tell Kakashi how things like Infinity works like he does usually when people are fighting him and he's very, like, egotistical and almost brags about how his abilities work, then Kakashi, who has an IQ over 200 higher than Shikamaru's in Shippuden, would probably be able to deduce how Infinity works or that Gojo has to activate it, and using his Ocular Jutsu which he uses against Zabuza in Land of Waves, he'd be able to hypnotize Gojo into thinking he's using Infinity when he's actually not, which is kind of an interesting win con if you think Part 1 Kakashi is strong enough to kill Gojo, as well as the fact if you think Ocular Jutsu would work on Gojo. As far as we know, Gojo doesn't actually have any illusion or mental mind hacks resistances. He's sort of just a powerhouse no one affects. However, even Ocular Jutsu and Genjutsu might not work against Gojo if you actually think that Infinity would just deflect or block all chakra interference that Kakashi would be sending to Gojo's body. As you know, things like ocular genjutsu, specifically Mangekyo genjutsu in the novels, actually injects your chakra into the other person, and if Infinity actually determines that as a threat, or Gojo would determine that as a threat, or even if you just say Infinity would just do it anyway, then the chakra that is being used during the genjutsu would never actually reach Gojo's body and would just simply diverge, and even then genjutsu wouldn't work either. So that's why I didn't really bring it up and make it too much of a focus of this video. It's not important really at all. The main win cons are once again, how fast do you think Gojo is? Do you think Kakashi's Kamui can rip him in half and bypass infinity? And do you think maybe Gojo's has infinite power or something crazy like that? With that, I'll leave it up to you guys. It depends on what speed you think Gojo has. Do you think he reacts to instantaneous attacks in Jogo's domain? Is he moving in a timeless void due to his speed? Do you think Gojo has infinite power due to scaling above Hawk? Kari's jackpot, etc, etc. Do you think the DMS can handle infinite void because of Itachi's Sukuyomi, which is described as above time and space and all earthly things? Would Kakashi just blitz calmly destroy Gojo before a fight even began? Etc, etc, etc. Regardless, it's a pretty interesting matchup, and I hope you guys learned something. Personally, I could see why you could argue for either, and I'd love to see what you guys think, as this is probably one of the more interesting and awesome matchups I've had to look into for quite a while, actually. But as a final fun fact for this video, and in fact, 
might be the most important fact of the video. Did you know that Akutami, the author of Jujutsu Kaisen, actually comments on Gojo versus Kakashi? I'm not joking. So the creator of Gojo actually says this. In the JJK fan book, I often hear people say that it's cool that Gojo has powers like Kakashi Sensei, but all I can say to that is that he's not really on the same level as Kakashi Sensei. So this is more than likely him implying that Gojo is inferior to Kakashi, at least in terms of their powers. Whether this is DMS Kakashi, Boruto Kakashi, or just normal War Art Kakashi is debatable. I'd argue it's more than likely DMS Kakashi, as DMS Kakashi, like I said, fights a dimension-busting god, basically, and has a lot of things that could potentially counter Gojo, like Kamui spam and things like that. And it's also him at his strongest at the end of Naruto Shippuden, whereas War Art Kakashi would just sort of be like a random middleman Kakashi to decide, it's kind of arbitrary. Where and Boruto so Kakashi, we haven't seen the full abilities of. Either that, or Akutami is saying Gojo would slam Kakashi on his neck, which would be surprising, <laughs> to say the least. Not impossible, but surprising. Anyway, thank you for watching.